If you've got a good quality tungsten carbide tip blade, you can get an excellent result on edge planing, rough sawn, weather stained or painted materials uh, by just running the material between the rip fence and the edge of the saw blade to skim off the unsightly edge. Bit of a word of warning, if your material's got any bow in it, like this one has, then preferably cut it bow facing up, it tends to be much more stable that way. Okay, I've set my rip fence to take off approximately two and a half, almost three millimetres. This piece of wood is slightly tapered. The safety guard can be adjusted a little bit further down. You'll notice the dust collection isn't highly effective when you're cutting face cutting on the edge of a piece of wood because sawdust will spew out the side. I'll show you a little fix to that in a moment. But this is a basic cut. Give me a nice, smooth, straight edge, and I can flip the board over and do the same to the other edge. Now, you may have noticed how much sawdust was created on the side of the table. There is a way of reducing that. I've simply added a mask of cardboard, which is held onto the safety guard by this knob, a couple of strips of masking tape, and uh, I've bent the flap of the cardboard sideways here so it actually presses up against the edge of the wood as I'm pushing it between the blade and the fence. You could get fancy, and you could make this out of clear plastic to increase your visibility, but you've still got plenty of visibility through this side of the safety guard. And in any case, this sort of edge planing is so straightforward, you could almost do it with your eyes closed. Don't take me seriously. Um, but really, all you're doing is pushing this piece between the blade and the fence. There's no offcut to worry about. Every piece you push through this gap will come out exactly the same size, no matter what size it was when it went in. So there's probably no need to do anything more elaborate than stick a bit of cardboard on. That edge planing technique can be used on all workpieces up to 620 millimetres wide, the limit of the Triton Work Centre's rip fence. What happens if you've got something wider, say a piece of particle board like this, and you want to take two millimetres or so off the edge? There is a way. I've made up this simple jig, which is just a piece of 32 millimetre thick particle board, which is sitting on the work centre table, hard up against the rip fence, and I've stopped it from sliding forwards and backwards by simply clamping these two little wooden blocks on, and they just drop over the end panels to stop any lateral movement in the jig. The jig started off as a parallel-sided piece of timber, but then I ripped it down and took just one blade width off to create a little step here. I finished the rip cut at about this point and then cleaned up that little curved cut with a handsaw. And I've positioned the jig so that the step is just behind the locking lever of the overhead guard support. I've adjusted the rip fence so that the front edge of my guide is just touching the edge of my saw blade. I can just rotate my blade by hand, just skimming there. And so that this back edge of the guide is actually proud of the front edge by the thickness of my saw blade. Then it's a very simple matter to take your large board if you have a Triton multi-stand, it makes large boards even easier to handle. And then you'll notice my hand position as this cut progresses. I'll start off by putting all of my pressure against the front fence here, pushing this board that way. I'll resist putting any pressure against the side of the saw blade, but when I get to the end of the cut, when this edge is near the back stepped out edge of the fence, then I'll transfer the pressure then. It's a good idea to file a bit of a radius on that step to avoid the sharp corner of the sheet snagging on it as you pass through. One of the limitations of this sort of jig is that you can only take off one saw blade width at a time, which in most people's cases is two and a half to three millimetres. One way around that is to get yourself some thin aluminium angle like this 
and screw that onto the jig with a couple of screws to the top there and uh, then you're taking off say one and a half mil with each pass. Of course you'll get a cleaner cut and easier depth control if you use a router for your edge planing as you'll see later in this video but if you haven't got a router this setup will work fine for trimming a small amount off a large sheet. And the best way of cutting a small amount off a large sheet is by using the Triton sliding extension table. More on that a bit later.